Hi, my name is Craig St. Jean from Netlink Digital Solutions. Welcome to our new series, OutSystems In-Depth. Today, I would like to walk you through what is the OutSystems platform, why do I believe it, and how can you use it? Stay tuned. OutSystems is a low-code or high-productivity application development platform. It allows you to develop web, mobile, business processes, and even apps for Alexa or other devices. And it allows you to do that very quickly without the overhead of traditional development. Now, personally, I've worked with a lot of 4GL or, or some of these similar tools in the past where they are great at producing something very quick as long as you do it in their way. You stay on the happy path, you're good. But the second you want to do something your way, it falls down. Now, what I really like about the OutSystems platform is, as I was personally evaluating it, it basically just never hit that point. It allowed me to do what I wanted to accomplish and what my business customers wanted me to accomplish without being handcuffed by the platform. It's well thought through in different places that it knows, uh, sorry, that the developers know it's not meant to handle. So if you have an existing .NET SDK that you need to pull in, you can do that. You're not tied into the framework. Or if you have some custom JavaScript or CSS or so on. And when you pair that with lifetime, the OutSystem CI CD tool, you can manage the full life cycle of your application in development, QA, production, or any additional environments that you might have with just the click of a couple buttons. Now, speaking about my evaluation, I came from a traditional coding background. I did a lot of Java, C Sharp, and then JavaScript SPAs. So I was very skeptical when I was first introduced to OutSystems. And to be honest, I didn't want it to succeed because I liked writing code. But I found that more than writing code, I liked solving problems for the business and being able to deliver very rapidly. So as I was evaluating OutSystems, I started by trying to throw something rather complex at it. I said, well, I want to build a new homepage for my company that is based on a cloud CMS with a custom data structure, full taxonomies, everything else like that. And then I was going to lead that into a portal that allows you to pull some inf information about your account, some documents, and things like that. And what I found was those extra integration points where I thought I was going to write some custom .NET code. I didn't even have to do that. I was able to stay within the platform and using some components that are available in the open source OutSystems community. So it was at that point that I invested myself further into the platform and learning this and becoming more involved with the community. And that's led to where I'm at today as an OutSystems MVP and working for an elite partner of OutSystems. Uh, I've never invested myself in something that I truly didn't believe in, and I truly do believe in the OutSystems platform. So now that I've discussed a little bit about what brought me here, let's talk about what components are included in the OutSystems platform. So what you can see here is just a, a general diagram that shows where we have something called Service Studio. And this is our development environment. This is going to interact with a deployment controller that lives in your different environments to generate your applications that ultimately run on IIS using .NET. It's going to connect to a SQL Server or Oracle backend database. And it has a few extra components with it. So Service Center allows you to administer each individual environment. Lifetime allows you to administer your environments as a whole. 
Integration Studio allows you to pull in that custom.NET code or even tables from external databases. And then there's some additional tools that have been developed as of recently, such as Workflow Builder and Experience Builder, which we'll get to at in some future videos. While I'm here, I do also want to point out that you're not on your own if you take a look into the platform. There's a lot of documentation as well as great community support for how to best use it. Uh, one of the examples here is called the Architecture Canvas. And this is the OutSystems methodology for designing your applications so that you can maximize code reuse and maintainability within your application as it grows to an enterprise scale. The link for this will be in the description below. Now, I find when I'm showing someone out systems, one of the best ways to give them an idea of what it's really about is just to jump in and actually show them building something. So what you can see here is Service Studio. This is my personal environment, which I'll discuss later. Uh, you can look at the little timelines on the video if you want to learn more about the personal environment, which allows you to get started in OutSystems for free. And I've got all these different applications or components installed. Um, we're going to ignore those for now. And I'm just going to create a new application. I'm going to say, let's start a new one from scratch. Now we can choose here, we want a reactive web application, a tablet application, a phone application, or something that's following a template that I may have installed from the OutSystems Forge. Again, look in the timeline for where that is. So first, I'm just going to build a reactive web application to show what this is like. Now, a reactive web application in OutSystems is going to use React.js, going back to REST APIs that are running within the ASP.NET application in IIS. Uh, and some additional background, the mobile applications are native Cordova applications that also use React.js and REST APIs in the back end. That being said, uh, we're just going to do a simple demo for today's video. Uh, and we're going to make a phone book. So let's just call this phone book. We can add an icon if we want. Uh, we can also choose the general color theme that our application is going to follow. Uh, we can change this later and customize everything through CSS and so on. This is just giving us a starting point. And now we can create our application. And you see here in this drop down, I can say I want to build a reactive web app, a blank application, a service, which would be for microservices, a reusable library, or an extension. Extension being uh, that .NET code or pulling in a table from an external database. So for now, we're just going to create a web app. Now, one of the main philosophies of OutSystems is to give you the ability to start very quick and then make changes as needed without doing anything that you couldn't have done yourself. Uh, actually, if we were to skip back in that new application dialog, there is even a build a new application from an existing one that will allow you to look at some existing applications of different styles and allow you to go from there. And this is pretty common throughout using Service Studio. So to demonstrate that, what you can see here, we have processes, interface, logic, and data. So I generally like to build my applications data first. That's just more along the way that I think. Um, and, and also just to call out, I'm going to create these database entities within my phone book application instead of a reusable module. This isn't what I would generally do, but just showing how the platform works. So I can say I want to create a new entity. And let's call this contact. And maybe I've got a first name and a last name. And maybe we also want to have a phone number for a contact. So I can say contact ID. Now one thing that you might notice is this data type here 
set itself to contact identifier. This means it's going to set itself as a foreign key reference to contact. So because I called it contact ID, it's going to assume that's what I want. I can, of course, change it if I want it to be just an integer text or so on. Similarly, if we add phone number, its data type is going to be phone number. Now, I can also set a, a phone number type to be based on an enumeration. These will also be stored in the database, but these are called static entities. So let's call this phone number type. And here, every record in this phone number type is going to have an ID, a label, an order, and is active. I can add columns to that if I want, but for now, we're just going to add a home number, a mobile number, and a work number. And within phone number, I'm going to create an attribute called phone number type ID, which has set itself to the phone number type identifier. So now that I've created these, I wanted to demonstrate how you can build screens very quickly and then modify them from there. Uh, but I'll also demonstrate how you can do it yourself if you want. So I'm going to take my contact entity, which is just going to be a table, and I'm going to drag it into the main flow. So within interface, we have common, layouts, and main flow. Common has things like our login screen, our menu, application title, these reusable things. Layouts has a base layout, one with a side menu, one with a top menu. And main flow is where we would generally put our actual screens. I can add UI flows as well based on what makes sense within my application. They're really just names. So we are in this section of the main flow. This is just like double clicking on main flow. For example, if I double click common, we can see these screens and reusable blocks that are set up within common. So I'm going to double click on main flow. I'm just going to drag contact into main flow. And when I do that, OutSystems is going to help me out by creating a contact screen and a contact detail screen. So if I look at interface, I can now open up contacts and I can see it's given me a listing screen with a search, the ability to add a new one. It's put in some columns based on my entity. It's added pagination. We also, and we also have a contact detail screen to modify a contact. Now, if I expand this, we have some variables that are part of the screen, such as the search keyword, the start index for a pagination, the max records for a pagination, the currently selected sort on our table, so first name, last name, and so on. We also have here a pull from the database. So we're going to read all the contacts from the database. And then we have some actions that are going to run within the browser called client actions. So we have on pagination navigate, on search, and on sort. Now on the left here, you can see we've got a bunch of these widgets. We've got search, table, list. We can also scroll down and find charts, different responsive design elements such as co uh, columns two, three, etc., as well as additional widgets like accordion, an alert box, um, notifications, a bottom bar, uh, if we want something at the bottom of our screen, wizard, and so on. Uh, and also, if we pull in additional UI components from the Forge, then they can show up here as well. Now, I can see exactly how this screen is built out by clicking Widget Tree. So here we see we have contacts, and there is a layout top menu, which I can actually change if I want. I can just click this drop down, and I can say I want to use layout side menu. Now, it's pretty bare because we only have the one screen, but uh, it, it shows what it would look like. I'm going to change that back because for this application this looks better. 
Now, navigation showed up here only after I switched it to the side menu because that was a placeholder within that template. So I'm just going to remove that. Uh, but we have our title, our actions, our main content, and I can expand this out and I can see, okay, there's a table. It's reading from our get contacts list. It has some CSS classes and some properties, show header, for example. If we expand that, we have our header rows. So we have first name and first name is a link that's going to take us to the contacts details screen, passing in the ID of our current contact and an expression which is going to give us a value of my current contact first name. So this is how we pull in dynamic data from within our data sources. And there's some additional things here as well, such as if there's no data and our pagination. Now, let's go ahead and give this a try, just as is. What you see here is called One Click Publish. If I click this, as long as it's green, it's going to deploy my application to our development environment, update the database, and the application will be live. You might also see it being red, meaning you have an error that you need to correct, or it being blue, which means that it's already been deployed and you can open it in your browser. Now, I've not sped this up, and this is my personal environment, but you can see how quickly it deployed here. And if I click Open in Browser, I then get presented with my login screen. I can sign in using my password manager. And we have our contacts list. And I can say add contact. Let's say Craig St. Jean and save. And there we go. The application is working just as I would expect. Now let's go ahead and modify this a bit. So we have our contacts, but we want to add in phone numbers. So I'm going to switch to my contact detail screen. And here we have an input parameter of the contact ID that we're referencing, our query to the database, uh, and our save detail. But I want all my phone numbers that are associated with this contact. So I'm going to drag phone number right down here. And what it's done is it's pulled this in and given me a get phone numbers by contact ID. So OutSystems has picked up on the fact that that entity has a contact ID and my input parameter to the screen is a contact ID, so I'm probably wanting to query for only those contacts, for only those phone numbers. So to show what this looks like, if I double click on this, I can see our sources for this query. So this is like your where clause and your joins in a SQL query. My filters, so I'm saying where my phone number contact ID matches the contact ID input parameter to the screen being like your where clause. And then here we have a dynamic sort. So this is using the table sort variable that gets adjusted when I click on the table. I could add a static sort and just reference one of these directly if I wanted to, but I don't have to. So going back to the screen, let's make a few changes here. We don't really need the contact for this phone number because we're on that contact page. So we are going to delete that column. I'm going to add in some spacing as well. So I'm going to add a style class, but you can also do this by using the style editor here and adding some padding there, for example. I prefer to use CSS, so I'm going to undo that and put a margin top base. Now just to show that really quick as well, if I double click on one of these style classes, I can see here is the table class definition in CSS for OutSystems UI. I also have customizations based on my theme, so this is that color that I picked out initially. 
I have any custom CSS that is specific to my application, and then I also have custom CSS specific to my screen. So I could put something in here, call it demo, and I can then use this editor to help me pick things out, or I can just type it in, for example. Now, to show you that theme editor that I mentioned before, here I can choose colors from an image, or I can use an existing palette that's already been defined, or I can go and just start modifying things directly. So if I wanted this, I, it then changes my primary colors to red, I can change my background colors, and so on. Uh, you also see here we have got a secondary, a neutral, and so on. So I just undid those changes. Now we've got phone number down here and our contact here, but we probably want to be able to add a phone number as well. Otherwise this phone number table is not very useful. So there's a few ways I can do this. I can either add something right here or I can use a pop-up. So for this example, I'm just going to use this space right here because it's an open space. So I'm going to put this image here in an if condition. So I'm going to right click and select enclose an if. I'm going to say I only want to display this image if my current contact ID is null, meaning this is a new contact. But if it's not a new contact, then I want to display a form to add a phone number. So I'm going to bring in a card because I like how that looks personally. Drag that in. And I'm going to find a form and drag that in. And now I'm going to switch to interface and I can just drag in a phone number from anywhere that I want. So I can use this as a placeholder, but in this case, I'm just going to create a new variable. So we're going to call this new phone number. I'm going to just drag that right in there. Now that's going to give me phone number, phone number type, and a save button. It also gives me contact because that was one of the fields on the phone number entity. So let's make some changes because we don't want that. So let's go ahead and delete contact. And then we'll modify our save so that way it saves the new phone number but associates it with our current contact first. So I'm going to double click here and by default it's going to say, okay, is this form valid? And then we can give you a message if it's not valid. We can add in some custom validations if we want as well. But I'm just going to make this simple. We're going to say an assign. Now if you look at the other options on the side, this is how we create an action flow within OutSystems. Specifically, this is a client action, meaning it'll run in the browser. So we can run additional client actions. We can run something from the server, refresh data, add if conditions, loop over things, download items, and so on. So an assignment is exactly what it sounds like. And I'm going to say, I want to set new phone number contact ID to the input contact ID of my screen. Otherwise, when I save that phone number record, it's going to not be associated with any specific contact. Now, if we look over here on the right, we also see there's this get contacts and it's got a yellow squiggly under it. And we've got one warning. And it says get contacts aggregate is never used in contact detail. Consider deleting it. This was created when I dragged that new phone number variable into the form because it was loading a contacts dropdown and it needed a data source to go off of. When I deleted that, it's no longer needed. So I'm just going to delete that aggregate because we don't want to query the database unnecessarily. So uh, continuing on, we are setting our contact ID and now we want to save that contact. So I can go into phone number and I can say create phone number and I can drag that in. So with all these database entities, 
OutSystems is going to give us a create, update, get, or delete. And I can say my source here is new phone number. Also a trick here, just to show you, if I delete this, I can then click plus here and put in the actual, the individual fields directly if I wanted to. But since I've already got a variable for it, I'm going to use that. Now it's also giving me a warning because it's saying you're exposing a database operation in the client side. Make sure to validate the data and the server action before changing the database. So if you're familiar with general web reactive security, if I expose the ability to create or, mo or modify anything in my database such that my client can just call it as wanted, then anyone can use their Chrome console or Edge console or so on, or use other tools and make calls to affect my database directly since I'm not doing anything to protect those. So I'm not going to continue down this train of thought at the moment, uh, but generally you would want to create a server action that allows you to then validate that the user is signed in and they have the right role and my data is valid before actually executing this create. That being said, now that we've created it, I want to refresh my get phone numbers. So I've switched back to my interface tab and I'm going to take this get phone numbers by contacts ID and just drag it right in here. This is similar to if I just dragged in refresh data. And once the application refreshes, it will automatically update the screen to represent the new data. So given that, I might also then want to clear out my new phone number variable so that way I can add an additional phone number if I wish. So I'll put in an assignment and I'm going to say new phone number, phone number, and phone number type. And I'm just going to set these to blanks. So phone number to a blank string and phone number type to a null identifier. So what we're doing in the save is we are associating the new phone number with my current contact. We are saving that in the database. And then we are refreshing the data that goes behind this table. So let's see what happens when we actually publish this change and try it. So I've clicked my one click publish. Again, this is not sped up. That's just how quick it goes. I'm going to click open in browser. We can close our previous tab. And I'm going to click on Craig. And we're going to say, I have a work phone number of 1555555 And I can hit save. And it's automatically refreshed the section down here and cleared this out. Now, if I go and create a new contact, so I've just clicked contacts in the menu, then we get that image because we had that in an if condition. And now that I'm seeing the screen, I probably also want to put this table in an if condition as well. Let's go ahead and do that really quickly. So we're switching over to Surface Studio. I'm going to click on my table. I'm going to say enclose an if. And we only want to show this if contact ID is not null. So we'll go ahead and publish that, give it a try. And as you can see, I can very quickly test out changes to my applications with the OutSystems platform. Oh, and I missed one more as well. <laughs> no items to show. Um, let's go ahead and pull the pagination and no items to show into that if condition as well. So we can very quickly iterate over our application. Let it publish. There we go. Now it's gone. And if I go into my existing one, it's there. Now I told you that you can create screens from scratch as well. So if I wanted to create a screen from scratch, I have two options. I can create a new screen and make it blank, or I can follow one of the many templates that OutSystems provides 
that follows industry best practices for a certain type of screen. So we can say, I want to create an admin dashboard or a regular dashboard, uh, a horizontal screen with detail, a list screen, master detail screen, and so on. And you also see some of these have new because OutSystems added these templates in after the fact. So this onboarding with animation is a new template. I've personally actually never seen this one. Uh, product catalog, uh, product feature, and etc. So I'm going to go ahead and create an admin dashboard. And we're just going to call it um, phone book integrity. It's just going to show how many contacts that I have that are of different types and show any that were submitted without any, uh, any contacts that were created without any phone numbers. So OutSystems has created the screen for me using its own template and sample data. Uh, and as you can see here, we have this get requests database call which is going against sample request, sample employee with some joins, uh, and so on. So this is how templates work within OutSystems. They have their own sample data, but obviously that's not what I want. I want it to use my data. So I'm going to switch to the data tab, and I'm going to drag contact over this table. And you can see it says replace data with contact. So because this was a template, it knows I probably want to change things from what they originally had. So it's going to try to guess as to what I'm trying to accomplish with this table. So it's not perfect. It says first name ID 65, last name, first name. So let's go ahead and change that really quick. We're going to double click on value and we're going to change our expression to say just first name here. And we're going to change our expression for the last name column to last name. Now one of the things I want to do is I want this to show contacts without phone numbers. So I'm going to modify my aggregate of get contacts. So I'm going to double click it and I can rename it up here if I want without phone numbers. So we are just going against contact. So let's bring in phone number. Now I can just drag that in because there is a foreign key relationship it's going to set that up for me automatically saying phone number contact with or without phone number phone number with or without phone number type. Now I don't need phone number type in this case because I'm not actually going to have a phone number. And I can say I want a contact with a null phone number ID. So that's essentially accomplishing a without. So I'm going to say where phone number ID is null. Now my only sample data in there obviously did have a phone number so that's not going to show up. But we'll show how this works here. Um, if I go ahead and publish this, and then switch over to Chrome, let's create a new contact, and we're just going to call it demo demo. Now demo demo does not have any phone numbers associated. So let's take a look at what the dashboard looks like now that I've created that entity. So going back into Service Studio, I can take a look at my get contacts without phone numbers. And I can see we have demo demo showing up because I'm saying I've got a contact with or without a phone number. However, I'm saying the phone number's ID is null. And one other thing is if we actually want to see this on the screen, we probably need some navigation to it. So I'm just going to take my phone book integrity and drag it into my menu and it automatically adds that in there. Uh, and to show what that's doing, that's just opening up this menu reusable block and it adds a link to my phone book integrity page. So I can go and modify this as at will. Another quick publish. And 
And now let's bring it up, refresh our page, phone book integrity, contacts without phone numbers. And I'm going to click on that. And it says feature not implemented, create your own action or navigate to a different screen. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. So I'm going to switch back to my phone book integrity. My ID here has a link to my a not implemented action, but that's not what I want. I want it to go to contact detail and I want to pass in, oh, let me turn myself off there. So this was previously going to not implemented. So I switched it to contact detail and I want a contact ID of my get contacts without phone numbers dot list dot current dot contacts dot ID. OutSystems again trying its best to figure out what I'm trying to accomplish here. Now you can also see Service Studio says ID 65 here. That's because this example right here. So we can have within our designer it show whatever we want to visualize what this is going to look like or we can just get rid of that example that it already had in place and it'll just show phone number. But we could say Craig and we can say synced gene as examples. So let's publish it. And switch back over to Chrome. Demo, demo, and I click on it and now we are in our contact. Now, I'd like to briefly show you what it's like to develop a phone application while reusing components from an existing application. So one of the things that you might have seen within these property sections is if I click on a screen, we have public. This applies also to web blocks, to actions, and to data and other things. So if I set public to yes, that means other applications in my factory can take a dependency on this. And I can also take it further and say, I want this to be able to be used by other applications, but I want it to be read only, or I want it to be writable. So I'm going to change that to expose read only to no, because I'm just going to modify it straight from a mobile application. Again, with a full application, I would not put my entities in my web application and I would create some CRUD wrappers so that way I don't have to expose my entity as, uh, as writable and I can maintain some integrity there. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this change and create a new mobile application. So we're going to say new application, start from scratch. phone app, and we're going to call it Phonebook Mobile. Let's make this one red. I'll go ahead and create the application. And this guy right here says Manage Dependencies. So this is how I pull in dependencies from other components or applications. So if I want to use something from Advanced Excel or OutSystems Maps or so on, I can pull them in right from here. So I can say phone book, and I want just my database entities. And I can say apply. Now what that's going to do, is it's going to add them into the data section under phone book. So I can now work with these entities and read and write to them. So let's create a contact screen. We have contacts. It has first name, last name, and add contact detail. And let's just go ahead and drag in phone number as well. And I'm just going to go ahead and publish this as is. And if you want to learn more about mobile applications versus web applications, check out the OutSystems training site, which I'll talk about more later in the video. Now, mobile is a little bit different because 
if I open in browser, that's not what I'm expecting from a mobile app. But what OutSystems has done is they've provided a preview that shows what your application will look like on some different devices. So an iPad, an iPhone of different versions, a Galaxy Note 8. And you can see I've got this dot here because I'm working with a touch interface normally on a mobile device. Um, so I can see exactly what this is going to look like. And I can go to create and so on. I've got my menu. Now you can distribute mobile applications in two different manners in OutSystems. You can generate a traditional Apple or Android application, meaning an IPA or an APK, and you can distribute those to the respective stores. Or I can build this as a progressive web app, which means I can run it as a traditional application, but from my browser. So if I click uh, enable PWA, it wants to switch over to Service Studio. I'm just going to switch over anyways. I'm going to click my development tab. And here we have develop, which is listing my modules, and I'm going to switch to distribute. So here I could configure my Android or Apple store uh, properties, or I can say distribute as PWA. And once I do that, I can then take out my phone, scan this QR code in my camera app, And now we are at a web version of my mobile application. Now, mobile applications and OutSystems use Cordova. So anything that has a Cordova plugin, you can use as well. That means you can use accelerometers, GPS, camera, barcode scanners. You're not just limited to a web style application because it does get bundled as a traditional Cordova app or as a PWA. Now, a couple of other things that I just haven't touched on yet is the debugger. You can debug just like you would expect, just in this low code fashion. So I can double click on one of my actions. I can say add a breakpoint and I can start debugging either right on a device or in Chrome or for a web application, obviously just in Chrome. And I can step through just uh, with, you know, step over, step into, return and so on. I can also look at previous versions of my module. So let me switch to the phone book because I published a bunch of versions of that. I can say, let's compare with another version or file. So anytime I do that one click publish, I'm creating a new version. So I can say, let's compare my current one to this version three. And it's going to pull up a visual comparison tool. It's going to say, okay, in our new version, we have these sample data dependencies because I didn't remove them after we pulled them in. We've got changes to our contact. In this case, our public and read only. We've got changes to the screen. So I can double click here and I can get a visual comparison. See these flags of what's changed. And I can click next and go through those. And if I wanted to, I could even merge some changes in. Another thing that you'll find in here is the ability to export and save as. This will allow me to save this module as an OML file that I could then distribute by some other means. And we also have processes. So I'm not going to go into processes in this video, but these allow you to generate business process models with automatic and human activities to design workflow, as well as timers for any batch type process that you want. Also in here, you can find we can bring in images. We can modify my current theme details. We can add in JavaScript. We can pull in REST and SOAP APIs or expose them. Uh, we can create roles for our application and we can create structures or configurable properties or even different languages for my application. So 
what OutSystems is providing here is everything I need to build a full enterprise application. Now let's take a look at the next component called Service Center. Service Center allows you to administer a specific environment of your OutSystems platform. So in this case, I'm administering a development environment. And we can look at factory and look at all of the applications that are installed. I can also look at modules, extensions, and solutions, which are lists of applications. Uh, and, and I'll show you what we have with our phone book application. So if I click on that, I can see what our dependencies are, as well as manage any operations that I want. I can look at the logs for this application um, and so on. So, but let's look at the module. Here we can see we've got different versions. I can publish or download previous versions. I can see dependencies going both directions. I can modify any single sign-on or multi-tenant needs that I have. I can also change REST and SOAP uh, endpoints. So if I'm pointing to a development API and I promote to QA, I can say QA needs to point to the QA API. I can change any site properties that are configurable. This is within Service Studio. Uh, if you saw here we have site properties. And I can also manage any timers or any operations against my application. Now I can go into monitoring as well. So when you have traditional development, you obviously can look at your logs. So here we can see any error logs for this environment or any general logs. So we've got logins or anything else that I might have logged. We can also get some uh, metrics on our different integrations and see how long they're taking. Or I can look at extensions uh, in this case, there's no logs to show. But I can look at uh, timers, see when they're running, when they're scheduled to run next. I can rerun them manually. I can look at any emails that are going out. I can look at the various processes. So here I can look at this process, and I can see there's these different instances of this process. And it's going to show these different areas of the process that it went into. I can look at mobile applications. So this is mobile app generation. So if I'm going to generate an IPA or APK for an, uh, for an Apple or Android device, I can look at the health of my environment. And I can look at security, which is normally administered through lifetime. Now I can also go into administration and modify things like our default date time format, I can modify our database connection so I can add a connection to an external database. So imagine if you're running in a cloud environment and you want to connect back to a local database, as long as you have a VPN from that cloud environment, uh, then you can add that in. Or if you're running out systems on premise, you can also, of course, just connect to an additional database from there. I can also administer my SMTP server. Uh, and anything else that I need. Last, I can look at analytics. This is my personal environment, so it's not going to show me this, but this allows me to get detailed reports on different aspects of my applications. Now, I mentioned that lifetime is what manages my application across environments. So if I go to lifetime, I can see all the different applications with the different environments that I have, as well as administer those a little bit. Now, I'm going to switch over to a different environment that's not a personal environment, so you can actually see what this looks like. So here, we have an environment that only has a development and production environment. And I can look at my applications listing, and I can see what applications are where, and publish them to those further environments as needed. I can also manage users and teams, or go into my environment information and find out 
how much database usage I'm using, change SSL certificates, things like that. And I can also even look at analytics across my, my environments to see how my applications are performing. And this is going to give me a breakdown of, uh, of the different applications and different screens, as well as which ones are performing slowly over time, or which ones are performing poorly for my users. And I can look at that from a overall perspective, from a client side perspective, a network perspective, or a server perspective. Now, this is also a demo environment, so there isn't any data to show, but these are normally graphs showing uh, that information. Now, I want to show what it's like to deploy. So if I click deploy here, I can create a deployment plan. And this is going to allow me to choose what applications I want to deploy from development to production. So let's just say I want these couple of components here. Now, it's asking if I want to tag these versions and deploy them, or if I want to deploy the previously tagged version or do nothing. In all these cases, I just want to tag the latest and deploy, and I can validate. Validate is going to make sure I have all of my dependencies in order in order to move to the production environment. In this case, there were no additional dependencies. Otherwise, it would have added them in there, and this button would have turned red. Uh, so I can say, let's continue. And next, we can configure any application-specific settings. I'm just going to continue on. And last, I can review my deployment plan and elect to actually deploy it. Or if I'm a developer who doesn't have access to deploy, I can save my deployment plan and provide that to someone within release management so they can complete it. We also have some other aspects of lifetime, such as tagging and versioning. So if I click on this accelerators core, I can see we have uh, version 0.1 plus, meaning there's been changes to it. And this isn't a mobile app, so we don't have mobile versions. I can say, let's tag this as 0 0.2, and we're just going to call it example tag. Now, this is erring because I did not discard my previous deployment plan. So you can only have one active deployment plan at a time. And if I click Deployment Plans, I can find that one. And we have Review, and I can discard it from there. So I'm going to click on Deployment Plan 72. And I'm going to click Discard Plan. And now that I've done that, I can go back into my Accelerator Core, and I can tag the 0 0.2 example to tag. We can also look at permissions of this application, version history, change log, and so on. Now, another component to OutSystems is called Architecture Dashboard. Architecture Dashboard is OutSystems' answer to static code analysis. So if you're used to traditional development tools, looking at your code and giving you recommendations or potential vulnerability issues or so on, uh, this is that equivalent. So I'm going to open up Architecture Dashboard, sign in, And I'm going to look at a development environment uh, that has some actual applications in it. Now, I want to take a look at this Facebook login plugin just to give an example. So I'm going to open the app report for that. And it's going to show any architecture, performance, maintainability, or security concerns that it's found. So here it says there's public entities that aren't read-only. This follows bad practice. It tells you what the impact is 
how to fix it, and exactly where these components are. We have some images that are large file size that might need to be optimized. We have some architecture concerns, uh, and we have some security concerns, and so on. So this allows us to improve the quality of our code uh, just by looking at this report any time that we want. Now I've mentioned the forge a couple of times. So I like to call the forge uh, GitHub for OutSystems. So basically everything that's out there is an open source component or application that you can pull into your environment with some exceptions of some uh, product advertisements from some of OutSystems partners that are in there as well. So here I'm in the forge and we can see these different applications, OutSystems UI, Silk UI Web, Google Maps Web, and so on. So there's a few things to know about the forge. This red shield here means that it is supported by OutSystems. So you can create any support ticket you want against one of these components, and OutSystems will support that component, even though this is a community marketplace. You can also find a green shield. So um, if I look for something called Ardo JSON, which is a common JSON parsing library, here you can see it has a green shield. Green means that it is trusted, which means that it has been code reviewed by OutSystems and or OutSystems MVPs for code quality and best practices. And anything without a shield simply hasn't gone through that certification process. So just because it doesn't have a shield doesn't mean that you shouldn't consider it. Uh, even, for example, Google Maps, uh, as I've mentioned, is without a shield there. Now, if I want to use something, let's say I want to connect to Amazon S3. I can search for that, and I can look at the different connectors that are here. And let's take a look at this one here. We can see this was last published in 2019. It's got five stars. It is available for OutSystems 11. There's 513 downloads and so on. And we can also open this right in the forge itself to get more information on this component, such as reviews, documentation, if there is any, um, support where people are posting in the forums against the component, and so on. But let's go ahead and install this just to show what it looks like. So first, it's going to make sure I have any dependency that I need. And when I click install, it will then pull it down, install it into my environment, and I can then use manage dependencies just like I pulled in those database entities from PhoneBook into PhoneBook Mobile. Uh, I can also open this module once it's done and look at the code. Uh, as I mentioned, everything in the forge that's downloadable is open source. So let's give it a moment. So I can click on it and I can see we have this module here and this extension here. And if I click on the module, we have interface, which there aren't any because it's an S3 connector. And we can look at server actions. We can see what happens when I go into a bucket put. It's going to do an S3 login and then an S3 bu uh, put bucket. And these are in the Amazon S3 connector, which leads me into another component of OutSystems. This is called Integration Studio. So I've mentioned this before. So this is what allows me to actually pull in .NET code or connect to an additional database. So I'm going to click download and I'm going to pull in this Amazon S3 connector from my environment. And when I do this, it's going to ask to save to my local computer. I can see it has these different actions. I can see it has these resources, so these DLLs, these C sharp files and I can go ahead and modify the source code for that extension. So let's allow Visual Studio to open.
and I can expand this out and open up Amazon S3 connector.cs and take a look at the actual code that is running behind this extension. If I then were to modify it, I can do a one-click publish from Integration Studio, just like in Service Studio, and the new version of this extension will be in my environment. Now, I talked a little bit about the community when it comes to the Forge, but another part that I want to talk about is the forums. So the forums are an extremely active aspect of the AMP Systems community. You can see this was four minutes ago, five minutes ago, eight minutes ago, 19 minutes ago, and we're off hours at the moment. Uh, so this has really got a lot of uh, involvement from people. And when you've got questions, this is the best place to go because it's gonna have OutSystems employees, OutSystems MVPs, and other people that are interested in interacting with you and helping solve your problem. Uh, a lot of times you'll even see people provide uh, full sample applications on how to accomplish a certain task. So I definitely encourage you to check this out and, and see how this can help you with your journey through OutSystems. The next thing I want to talk about is OutSystems Fantastic Training Center. So from here, I'm not even logged in and I have access to all sorts of training within OutSystems. I've got guided paths if I want to become a reactive web developer, a mobile developer, and so on. I can use a training planner, or I can look at specific courses, or if more appropriate, I can, um, I can book classroom training when certain world conditions die down. Um, looking at courses, you can see we've got overviews, how to model data, how to do logic, uh, and, and there's a lot here. Uh, you can just search security, for example, role-based security, developing web app, uh, applications touches on it, mobile application architecture touches on it, infrastructure management, master class on security, um, or if I want to learn about CSS, I can learn about that. If I want to learn about mobile, I can take a look at everything that has to do with mobile, of which there will be a lot. I can also look at previous tech talks from, uh, from previous conventions. So we can look at recorded series from OutSystems Developer Conference in Portugal. We can look at um, sessions from Next Step, the annual um, marketing and developer-based conference for OutSystems, um, and so on. Now, if you're interested in Next Step, you can actually go to OutSystems.com slash Next Step, and you can watch all of the sessions on demand from OutSystems Next Step 2020, including my own. And when 2021's Next Step is ready to go, you will be able to register for that uh, as well. And all of this is available to you for free virtually. And last, with training comes certifications. So if you're interested, there are some great certifications here that will really give you some exposure within your company or if you're looking for a job in OutSystems. And, uh, and they're all very well laid out with exactly what you need to do in order to prepare for them. So if we want to become an associate reactive developer, we can see the cost, we can see there's no pre-requirements, and I can look at all of the details for this certification. So let's go into um, here and we have a detail sheet as well as a sample exam. So as you can see here, let me resize this. There is the format, number of questions, how much you need to pass, the duration, and even the topics, how many questions of those topics, and what you need to do in order to prepare. So what online resources do you need to go through, what documentation is relevant, and so on. And very last thing that I want to talk about today is the free edition 
of OutSystems, also called the Personal Edition. Now, this allows you to get started at no cost in the OutSystems cloud uh, with everything that I showed you today, with the exception of architecture dashboard and having more than one environment within lifetime. So I was demoing this in my own personal environment. So if we say get platform, sign up for an OutSystems account, uh, we can put in this information. Again, the link will be down below. And we can create a free edition that runs in OutSystems on their AWS instance. It'll never go away unless we just stop using it. After 30 days, they do reclaim, uh, sorry, after 30 days of no use, they do reclaim the uh, those environments, but you can just click wake up and spin it back up. Um, so, so these are yours to experiment with sandbox um, and, and really find out if OutSystems is for you. So I really encourage you, give it a try and see how you like it and check in with some other videos on our channel to learn more. Uh, again, thank you so much. This is Craig St. Jean from Netlink Digital Solutions. I hope this has been beneficial to you, and I hope you give OutSystems a try. Thank you.